Welcome back guys to our Android programming tutorial series on Toolbar. I am Annie from Smart Herd. In this video, we will be learning about the standalone toolbar, that is, the implementation of toolbar as independent view group. Since the toolbar will be used as a standalone toolbar, we can define the properties and contents of the toolbar independently. We can define the layout for the toolbar independently. So, let's jump into Android Studio and start implementing the toolbar in our Android application and see how we can customize our toolbar and make our application interface more attractive and suitable to use for the user. This was our application that we had left in the previous video series. All the codes in the styles.xml that is the theme that we had defined, the app material theme, super material theme are all same. The activity main.xml has only changed. Because we did not need the widget that we had dragged into the main activity for the toolbar, I have removed those widgets. And instead of that widget, I have put three buttons into the main activity. The three buttons are for the three different part of this video series. One is for the standalone toolbar. The second one for toolbar as action bar and the third one for the use of contextual menu in our toolbar. Now guys, I'll tell you about the contextual menu in the upcoming videos in detail. But as of now, we need to deal with the standalone toolbar. On clicking the standalone toolbar button, the show standalone toolbar method will be executed. On clicking the toolbar as action bar, show toolbar as action bar method will be executed and same for the contextual menu. In the main activity.java, I have defined the three methods that we have put for the on click event of the button. The show toolbar as action bar method will start the action bar toolbar class. The show standalone toolbar will start the standalone toolbar class. And the show contextual menu will start the activity for the contextual menu. And we will write the code for each of these parts separately. I have defined the three activities here and in the Android manifest file, I have defined the activities because if these three activities are not been defined in the Android manifest file, the activity will not be triggered. So let's close the Android manifest.xml because we don't need it now. The main activity.java also can be closed. Now for the standalone toolbar, this is the basic setup that I have put for the standalone toolbar class. The set content view will take the activity r.layout.activity toolbar that is the activity toolbar xml will set the content view for the standalone toolbar activity. This action bar is the default action bar that is being provided with the theme that we have defined here that is theme.appcompat.light. Now let's proceed with the codes in the XML file and see how the toolbar can be implemented in our application. The basic code for the implementation of the toolbar is to include android.support.v7.widget.toolbar. Let us give it the layout width of match parent and the layout height of wrap content. Now guys, this is the toolbar that is being set up in our Android application. We had learnt in the previous video series on the basics of material design that the background color of the toolbar is set by the color primary. So let us set the background for our toolbar. So guys now we can see on the right side in the preview section there are two toolbars in our application. One is the default that is provided with the theme and the other one which we have included here in the XML code. Because we don't need this action bar in our application we can change the theme in style.xml to theme.appcompact.light.noactionbar. So now there it is. We have only one toolbar that we have implemented in our application. Let us give it a minimum height. The minimum height of the toolbar being defined as action bar size. That is the default height of the action bar will be the minimum height for our toolbar. Now guys, because the toolbar is a view group, it can be placed anywhere on the screen. At the top of the screen as we have placed here, at the bottom or at the middle. Now let us run our application and see if it is working or not. Here is our application up and running. 
we can see this is the main activity with the three buttons because we are learning about the standalone toolbar and we have implemented the codes for the activity toolbar that is the layout for the standalone toolbar let's click on it and here it is this is our toolbar that we have defined in the activity toolbar.xml we had learned in the previous videos that the toolbar may contain a title a subtitle the menu icons overflow icon navigation icon but here our toolbar is just simple and plain so now let us include the various contents of the toolbar in our application before moving forward i would like to tell you there is a little trick that we can apply instead of declaring the toolbar here in the activity toolbar.xml we can create a different layout for the toolbar and include it in the activity toolbar.xml or into any other activity where we require the toolbar so for that let us create a new layout resource file and let's name it as toolbar we will give the root element as android.support.v7.widget.toolbar click okay and this is our toolbar.xml moving to the text part we can just copy this four attributes to the toolbar.xml and here is our toolbar.xml layout file to include it in the activity toolbar.xml we just need to write two lines of code that is the include tag now we have included the toolbar layout into the activity toolbar.xml and here we can see we got the toolbar in activity toolbar.xml let us provide an id to it and this is our id for the toolbar now we have done the basic setup for the xml file let us move to the standalone toolbar.java file and make changes there and include our toolbar let us first define the toolbar here there is two toolbars one is android.support.v7.widget and the other is android.widget because we have used in the xml file the android.support.v7.widget in the java file we will select this toolbar we use android.support.v7.widget because it provides backward compatibility so that our application can run on all devices that is with the api level above 7 so let's select this toolbar and define it here it is because we are using the toolbar as standalone toolbar we can implement the title the subtitle the logos the menu icon independently so let us set the title and the subtitle for our toolbar now this is the title for our toolbar it is a very simple syntax the name of the toolbar m toolbar is this toolbar variable so m toolbar dot set title standalone toolbar Now we have defined the title of our toolbar as standalone toolbar. Let us set the subtitle. This is the subtitle in our toolbar that is m toolbar dot set subtitle by smart herd. Looking to few more properties, there are number of contents that can be included in our toolbar. The set logo, set logo description. We can see for the set logo there is two set logo. one is drawable drawable and the other is int resource id for the drawable drawable the logo is set by extracting the icon from the drawable folder and for this int resource id the logo will be extracted using the id that we have provided to it there is also the set pop up theme set overflow icon set title set title text appearance and many other properties I would like you to use them by yourself and be more clear about the concept of the toolbar. Now let me include a navigation icon. Set navigation icon. R dot drawable dot navigation back. I have defined this navigation back icon in the drawable folder. Now let us run our application and see whether this set of codes that we have included in our Java file works or not. Here is our application up and running. This is the navigation icon that we have defined in the drawable folder, the title and the subtitle. This navigation icon here is not according to the Google standards. 
this is just for the sake of example that I have shown you. We can change the color of this title, the subtitle. We can add many more icons and many items in our toolbar. We will be learning about it in the upcoming videos. That's all for this video guys. In the upcoming videos, we will be learning about the few attributes that are supported by the lollipop and ever version but not supported by the below version. How to make our app compatible using those attributes in the XML file and in the Java file. Till then, try your hands at setting various contents in the toolbar using the syntax mtoolbar.set the content. If you like the video, do share and leave your comment below the video. Subscribe to our channel and help us grow. I also have given the link for the source code of the entire module below in the description. You can go there and refer to it. That's all for this video. For further videos, stay tuned, keep smiling and have a good day.